There they are. There they are. All right. To the top right hand side, our blue Terran player from Dead Pixels is Clem. And he's going up against the red Terran player from Team Liquid. It is Euphermal. So guys, I just want to uh, point out as well, I know a couple of you guys are maybe expecting Mana versus Clem now, and Euthermal versus Keen. We had to swap matches around just a little bit to accommodate one of the players, so we put those two matches, which were originally scheduled initially, to actually now be played at the end of the uh, set of matches. So those will be the last two matches played, as we kick off into this Terran versus Terran. What's up, Andy Man? Kicking us off for the day with Chia 50, SC Friday Hype. Oh god, it's Friday, I forgot! God, I forgot. God, it's so horrible here, by the way, guys. The snow is so hard. It's super icy. It's not a good day at all just yet. It's not a good day at all just yet over here. Just snowy, horrible. I'm not looking forward to driving back home at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning or something today when we finish up this long stream and I finish up getting a bunch of stuff ready for tomorrow's stream, which is going to be very exciting. I'll talk a bit about that a little bit later on as well. Uh, but, yeah... As you do see, SCV's crossing paths here in the early stages. Euthermal and Clan going across the map to each other. Looking to see what's up here in the next few moments as SCVs will be arriving. And, well, both of them looking to expand. Both of them are going towards this Reaper expansion. Neither of them rushed up a second gas or something along those lines. So looking to be fairly standard on both fronts. And to just answer again, just to say again, as a few more people join the stream, we are going to focus on the Clem Euthermal series, but at the same time, we do have another fresh series going on, which is that Game Time versus Keen series, and we'll be giving you guys updates from that as we go. As you can see right here, it is ongoing. Um, there's already some mutalists on the map, which is kind of unique, uh, but that is going on. And again, we'll give you updates of that as scores come in, as interesting fights happen, etc. So you can get the updates live, but we'll also be casting those games in full a little bit later on. Maybe not all of them, depends how long the stream ends up being, but we will see. Reaper's going to hop up here, and we're going to see grenades going down. He's going to be seeing these uh, Reapers straight now, and I don't know who, I think Euthermal's got the upper hand, which means he does win that fight, but then a Reaper from Clem comes in, and he can push this away. Who is Clem, asks it, Marshall. This guy's got a lot of hype around him. He's a 15-year-old, um, 15-year-old uh, Terran player, and he has been doing very well lately, having a lot of success. And he's, uh, yeah, continuing to get invited to my events because I'm very hyped up about these young kids. And he's not a Zerg player in Europe, which is always a big positive as well. Actually, yesterday we saw our 15-year-old player, Raynor, topping his group. He finished first place over a laser and mana... Uh, no, a laser and uh, Petit Drogo. Also, Bly and um, True in that group. Raynor came out on top, and he's already through to tomorrow's playoffs. If you want to check out more of the bracket and results from yesterday, exclamation mark B in the chat will let you do that. As you do just see this Hellion and this Reaper starting to come through the center of the map, looking to see what's going on. That's a third CC from Euthermal, which is a very normal way to go, honestly. Uh, he's actually gone into what he's been doing a lot of lately, which is this pure Cyclone opening, which is where you react around Cyclones and you pretty much only build Cyclones for the foreseeable future. And the whole idea of this is that you can skip the Starport, and by skipping the Starport, you're able to get the third CC a lot faster, and you're just focusing pretty much purely on the, uh, you know, on the uh, factory production, on the Cyclones. The starport, you know, used to be really useful to get a medevac up, a viking, defense, harassment stuff as well. But it can just go so well if you just get up the uh, other few bits and pieces. As we actually have already a little bit of an update for you guys. I'm gonna put it on the picture in picture here. But uh, we do have game time tapping out of uh, game number one. As he just doesn't have enough, his mutas come in for a fight there. But it wasn't enough, and Keen does take the first map of that best of three. So Keen going up 1-0 so far over in that TVZ, which is ongoing as we uh, move along. So a couple of Cyclones just uh, moving out onto the map. As we're going to be seeing the Club Banshee from Clem is, well, getting ready to roll. His first Banshee should be across the map here somewhere. There it is. So coming across towards the south side, looking to see what will happen. And we're going to be seeing it uh, actually being spotted by a Hellion here. So Euphem will already will be able to pull some Cyclones in towards the main base. And that's why he's uh, going right away here now. 
As you do see the cycle is coming on in and maybe a scan. There's the lock on. Triple lock on. Second scan to get the Banshee. Worthwhile because, I mean, you never want to spend two scans, but better to spend two and get it than to spend one and let it get away, right? So. That's going to be seeing these uh, few cyclones. Now Gavin back up in the low ground. He's gone to Hellion production a lot faster than I feel like he used to. He actually taught me this build a little bit. And he's actually on just Starport too. So he's obviously been changing things up as he figures it out more. But this wasn't mass, mass, mass cyclone like I thought it would be. Instead, you know, there's a few cyclones up. And now he's already going towards Hellion tank. Maybe just the meta shifting a little bit and stuff like that. And as we do see the uh, starboard coming up as well, that's way faster than it used to be. It used to get this off of like five factories, three, four bases set up. It used to be kind of like an afterthought, not a, oh yeah, let's get a starboard and establish that in this game, you know? This orbital lifts up and moves on down to the low ground third base location. A couple of SCVs moving over there. And this lone heli coming through the center of the map as well. Are you thermal just going across the map to see what else is going on. Blue Flame starting on up for Clem right here, so getting that ready to roll. We're going to see a couple of medevacs and another Hellion on the way out. You see those tanks firing away and that Hellion getting cleaned up nice and quickly. Well, not getting cleaned up. Again, pushed away. Just you thermal looking for some information though, right? Nothing too major right away here in game number one. As I do see this Marauder of Clem starting to come down the right-hand side to look to see where he can go, what he can get up to as well. Is there a possibility to watch the Wadi VT Team League matches somewhere? Dude. <laughs> if I could, if, trust me, I've been trying to organize the Wadi VT TV Team League matches for so long. Some of them just aren't getting scheduled, and the other ones, I lost the replays of because they got played on the patch where all the replays were. Literally fucked my life. So, hopefully soon I'll have something for you guys regarding the Team League. Most importantly, basically we want to forget about Season 7 though, we want to talk about Season 8, which will be announced in a couple of days. Um, it's going to be awesome compared to what Season 7 has been. Anyways, three bases of pieces, Clem is going to be playing Bio against the mech of Euthermal. And already this Bio Force coming out and away through the center of the map. A couple of scans across here from Clem. Having a little bit of a look to see what's going on. I mean, Hellbats and Medivacs from Euphilmos so obviously wants to drop on top of this. His first tank is doing a little bit of damage here. He's already setting up, and now the Hellbats dropping on top. He's actually got a couple Hellbats still inside of a Medivac here. But it looks as though Euphilmos is going to clean this out. Look at that. Two uh, Hellbats should be able to drop on top of these tanks as well. He loads up two more. Euphilmos just not seeing this. And we'll kind of be able to lift these uh, tanks up and get them away. But that was not a successful first fight. It's reinforcing. I mean, he just doesn't have enough to keep on fighting this, of course. So Clem not looking brilliant here. He's going to see this uh, new factory just coming up out the front. Tanks, Marines, a couple of Marauders moving through in towards the center. Plus two attack is on the way right now from Euphemal, plus two Platon as well. His upgrades are really good here, of course, with that double armory early in the game, and that's definitely something which will help him moving through. Is actually Euphemal going to move across the map. Meanwhile, Clem is going to hit the third base, and we might be talking about a base trade to here to some extent soon. The thing is, this is not a lot of units to base trade with from Clem's point of view. It's a lot more to base trade with from Euphemal's point of view. As he pulls away his SCVs from the third base already, honestly, he can just lift this third base up and probably just relocate it and kind of go from there as he sets up over in this position. Well, he's just going to get so many... I just feel like he's going to get so much more done over time. You know, again, initially for Clem, this is great, although he might actually be able to kill this third. Okay, it gets prepared a little bit. That goes a long way. Now Euphemal is losing SCVs. Oh, and he does lose the third CC. And at the same time, he's already killed the natural CC of his opponent, and the third base is having to run away. Euphemal's got a couple of Hellbats mixed up in this third of Vax as well, once more. You've seen these Hellions trying to open their Hellbats again, and it looks as though Euphemal is holding off on the other side of the map. I mean, I guess he's not making much more progress over here as he comes in to cancel this base. Clem will kind of, wherever he can, throw down this CC. Euphermal's own fourth base was building as well. That's going to be finishing shortly too as well, Bio comes down. It will start to clean out Euphermal's forces now. So Euphermal is going to get cleaned up across the map. So all is said and done, 24 SCVs killed to the 19, but the worker counts end up even. Euphermal down a little bit in army supply. Clem's in this awkward spot where his army is, or his bases are now very spread out, and he doesn't have a third CC, whereas Euphil did manage to keep this one building. And by keeping this one building, he's going to finish that up now. And obviously, that's a big advantage for him, as we're going to be seeing Hellbats still up in these medivacs. A couple of tanks gathering together underneath, the, underneath these medivacs, too. 
MT Vikings coming out of this main base. Now Liberate comes in some harassment from Clem. Gonna be away for him to get back in this a little bit as the Viking will come over to respond. It's important for Ethan who is now reactoring out Vikings to hold that air control. He's gonna be seeing the few SCVs coming into repair, and the Viking will win out this fight and will just grab the kill there. SCVs are not repairing any longer, but now Vikings arrive from Clem, and this way it gets a bit trickier for Euphermal, and he's going to lose that Viking instantly. His army of Clem is now pushing in towards this uh, third base. Is he going to be seeing Euphermal? Well, he's got the Medivacs once again. It's been a big part of his playstyle, and he drops the Hellbats right in the front line, and honestly, with the tanks coming in behind this now, I think you can see that there's just going to be too much as he pushes on through. We're going to be seeing well, the Siege Tanks getting cleaned up in Clem. This was a fight that looked very similar to the first fight of the game, which was not a good one for him, as now Yufan will just go across the map and counter almost immediately. And Clem, well, he isn't really in a position to macro up, right? He's still only on two orbitals. He hasn't set enough for third base behind this. He's killing some Marauders with these Hellions mid-map because he just so heavily outnumbers them. Hellions morph into Hellbats here. Euphermal coming on over towards the right hand side, setting up and looking to see what will happen as a couple of Vikings are continuing to fight. Skirmishing, Euphermal starting to win this out, and he is just looking for a way to fight into Clem. Doesn't know that this base is up here, I guess, as uh, we're going to be seeing what maybe comes of that very soon. Euphermal still just pressing forwards, and uh, well, here we go, just fighting into maybe just pick up the victory right now. Hellbats are just doing the majority of the work. He feels as though the tanks are even a lot, even needing to join the fight. That's just going to be seen still pushing on in. Hellbats, tanks, and all sorts. Pulling in on up, and well, yeah, I think Clem is just out of this one. GG. Euphermal picks up game number one of this best of three. Meanwhile, guys, we do actually just go, go, go. As we kick off to the top left hand side of the map, our blue Terran player from Dead Pixels. Down again. Let's see if he can bounce back and tie it up. It is Clem. And to the upper right hand side, the red Terran player from Team Liquid, it's Euphermal. So game two of this best of three and looking to see which direction we go in from here. Again, guys, just to give you an update that uh, we did initially, uh, we did change the initial matches that got played here today. And so Clem versus Mana and Euphermal versus Keen will be played at the end of today's series. Already we saw Keen 2 game time though, which means that actually game time and Mana have just got in game. Just to show that on screen a little bit, there you go. Game time and mana currently in game and starting to play out their best of three. So game time mana is the next series up as the B game. Uh, you guys can, if you want to see the full match order, it is now correct on Liquipedia. If you exclamation mark bracket in the chat or exclamation mark B, the list of matches on Liquipedia is the correct order that we'll be playing in today. So after this, Euphermal versus Clem, we will have Euphermal versus K. Uh, sorry, we'll have Clem versus Keen after this, uh, and obviously Game Time Mana just starting up because they were already ready to play, and so we let them get going nice and quickly. CC on the way down here for Euphermal. As we uh, get that kick started, obviously just him expanding early. A comparison here to the upper left, where we do see this, uh, well, one base player Clem initially, two workers on each gas, but it is actually only two workers on each gas, it's not three workers on each gas. So, uh, interesting. But it is a faster factory that is going to be focused on expanding later and attacking earlier. As you're going to see Reaper action hitting each other in the center of the map right here. Grenade goes down. Euphemal backs away. He's going to throw down Grenade 2 and he actually gets mm, a good shot, but I don't think it was enough. He's actually down on health. Oh, the SCV intercepts. Euphemal goes down a Reaper right away, but he does have another one on the way up. So he might be delayed on the natural by just a little bit here. And he does have to pull his SCV back. So already that's... Uh, Nice little something. And also going to be seeing this Reaper moving away as well. Reaper Clem being chased all the way up top, and we're going to be seeing this grenade going down again. And we're just going to be seeing the. Uh, obviously, the arrival of the second Reaper causes some issues. You think we'll try and buy some time? He really wants the Cyclone to come out, but man, losing that first Reaper is sucking for him. As a Cyclone for Clem's coming across too, right now Euphemal just completely outnumbered in terms of units. He is going to take damage from this. He sends a Reaper across the map now. SCV's a little bit back and forth. Oh, I like that. The idea of raising the Depot to se uh, segregate the kind of the Reapers from the Cyclone. Now his own Cyclone comes down. He will pick up a Reaper kill, I think. No, it gets away just on super low HP. 
Now this other side, well now the Cyclone comes down to low ground, he needs to find a way to fight this. SCVs are apparently going to be the answer, get some SCVs in front. He needs to save the command center, and here we go, he doesn't actually manage to connect onto the uh, Cyclone right away here. So his own Cyclone already half health, which is really painful. SCVs are dancing with the uh, Reapers and so on, and Euphemal Micro in his heart out right now. Tries to dodge away from that grenade, he doesn't manage to in the end. But we will see the CC finishing, and that's a big victory for Euphermal. In the sense that he just doesn't die here, right? And he otherwise, he maybe really could have done as We're going to be seeing Cyclone, Cyclone wants more. Marines are going to help out enough, but I don't think he gets a kill. Ooh, he's going to be able to chase a little bit as these Cyclones turn corners, but I don't think he picks it up. And so those two Cyclones are going to get away here from Clamp. What's up, Mark BT? Going in with the 25 month resub. How you doing? There's, whoa, there is one Cyclone going down, and another one, but now you thermal in trouble, and he's going to have to pull away. Oh my god, that Cyclone is running and running, he can't get around the top without dying. Now two more Cyclones about to arrive, but you thermal with two Cyclones about to pop should be able to hold this off. Clem has expanded behind it, a free SCV lead off of the aggression that he got going early, and uh, you thermal now shouldn't take too much more damage, the game will stabilize just slightly. Thank you again, Mark BT, for the 25 minute free sub. Can you get some warty hearts in the chat, please, for Mark BT and show some love for a long time sub? Thank you very much, really do appreciate it. Let's get those uh, warty hearts up in the air. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Fed ZC coming down for Euphemal in position as he's going to try and hold this little choke point. He has a location he can fight in. He does take the fight for a moment or so when it's just two Cyclones on two. And he really does need his next two Cyclones to pop out. There's one of them, but only one of them. SCVs will pull in again. Euphemal is still just under pressure from the very early stages of this game. There he goes, four Cyclones. I mean, pulling the SCVs forwards, it is two players who have, you know, both a damaged Cyclone each. And actually, Euphemal gets a kill on a Cyclone very quickly. The SCVs are blocking Cyclones in! What a catch to the top side! Catching those Cyclones, and that's huge, because Euphemal now picks up multiple kills. Because a long way for him, as we're going to see a moment or so there. Actual Cyclone's taking a lot more damage, and this is a really weird scenario where Cyclone on Cyclone is super volatile, it is super high damage output, and, well, Euphermal, he's definitely coming out better in the Cyclone Wars, but remember, he's still down heavily in SCVs, and he's got SCVs off the line to create these traps, to create these repairs, and those are things which really hurt him here as well, continuing to move on through this, as we're going to be seeing now, while Cyclones do gather through the top side once more. You're going to see this uh, Watchtower being taken. On the left hand side, Euphemal will continue to push on forwards and look to see just what will happen next for him here. As he pushes in, he's actually going to fight five against three, so again the Cyclone count is just favorable to him right away, even though it really shouldn't have been. In the end, it's still three Cyclones and three Cyclones. Clem is able to push him back. Euphemal, though, little bits and pieces just keep trading a bit better. His third CC was slightly faster too, which helps him to recover in terms of the work account. Because remember, he was trailing there for quite some time now. Resources lost pretty much dead even. As, uh, Again, Cyclones. Nice micro. Euphemal has a lot of cool little micro things that are going his way, like stopping this Cyclone in front and uh, leaving it to attack, even though there's two Cyclones next to it. I'm actually helping him to pick up a kill. If you look at uh, the income graph, though, here, you can see that Clem has been ahead on income massively throughout the game. And that is going to be what really helps him out here and just allows him to transition a little bit more easily. For example, his two armories are finishing up, and he's going to be... Oh, sorry, one of them's finishing up. He just started the second one. But he's starting upgrades. And where are those upgrades from Euphemal? They're non-existent. He doesn't have armories right now. Cyclone's still just gathering over to the right-hand side watchtower. Scan comes down in towards the main base here. Euphemal just having a little bit of a scout to see what is going on. With these Cyclones gathering up together. And getting ready to potentially push across the map here once again. In the next few moments. This one vehicle weapon is still on the way up, and man, that will make such a difference here, by the way. Having plus one attack is going to be a huge deal for Cyclone on Cyclone, because the Cyclones attack so quickly that an extra attack upgrade, every single one of those attacks gets benefit, you know, benefits from it. And so obviously that then begins to go a long way here, as these Cyclones do just gather on up still just over to this left-hand side. A scan into the main base is going to reveal a little bit of something. Obviously Clem just sees a second reacted factory, in terms of his own production, well, it's the exact same thing. Second reacted factory, and getting his third factory set up. And again, I mean, you can just see another way in which Euphemal is behind. No third factory just yet. And it's things like that that, you know, Euphemal trails in because of how this game opened. It's pushing across here. Clem does have the Cyclone count to his advantage, and he will have the position. No way Euphemal can attack through this choke point into that sort of position. It just will not work out for him. 
As the Cyclone's going to pull back on over to the right-hand side. Now, Yuvimel has a similar setup where he has the Concave and there's no way Clem can realistically attack through this spot. Even with an upgrade lead in a few seconds, I think he has to be very careful about pushing into a position like that one. More of these Cyclones coming out and joining up out towards the third base. A lot of these Cyclones are going to loop around the south side. So they're going to come through the south and see where they can go. So, so many of the Cyclones still just set up on the third base though. And here we go, Clem. Getting ready to push on in towards this little bit of a position here. And he doesn't quite go for it just yet. Again, got to make that decision as to when and you know when and how he wants to fight this. And here you go. He is going to push in. Remember, he's got an upgrade lead. But he maybe does the positional disadvantage having to push through the choke points. You film with a couple of pullbacks. He has, you know, Cyclones which can't get into the fight as well. The plus one attack, again, a big deal. But so far, you film was able to hold it off. He has a couple of uh, Cyclones in the front now, Clem. I mean, Yufimo has to stay in this concave. He has to be ready to fight with more Cyclones. And that's what his advantage is going to be. It's going to be what keeps him alive. As he also has the SCVs to repair Cyclones up. That too will help him out in this scenario. You can see those uh, SCVs on mass repair. Again, Cyclone after Cyclone after Cyclone. Just as this is happening, guys, a quick update from Mana Game Time. They're in game one of their series. And Mana has just picked off a fourth base. And he's actually pushing the third quite heavily to the point where he's going to pick up the game. So that's just happened. Mana going 1-0 up against game time. Meanwhile, though, the fight is going to happen once again. Cyclone and Cyclone action. SCV start to pull forwards, but Clem, he still has the plus one attack upgrade lead. And because of that, he's pushing in not just plus one attack, but plus one plating. That's going a huge way to help it out. There's a tanky in the back as well. And new film will hold off, but only because it costs him 30 workers almost. To the point where new film will just type out GG. Into the bottom right hand side, our blue Terran player from Team Liquid. Give it up if you're cheering on, you thermal. He's up against the red Terran player to the top left hand side from Dead Pixels. It is Clem. <laughs> no warty face on sub. Yeah, um, if I was a bit more organized today, I probably could have brought my old webcam through from home, but then I completely forgot to because I'm useless. So there you have it. There you have it. Yes, 1-1 one, one in this Clem vs. Uthermal series. Other than this, our other scores so far today, Keen 2-0 game time. And Mana is currently up 1-0 against game time as well. The early game 2 is just kicking off with a Stargate opening, a Twilight Council follow-up. That series continues. Again, we'll be casting one map, uh, two ma well, we'll be having two matches being played at a time here today. Two matches being played at a time here today. And with uh, those two matches being played at a time, one will be cast live, and we'll go through the replays later. Well, it depends how long the ma uh, all the matches take. Um, but basically, uh, it depends how long all the matches take. But the uh, main idea is that we will try and cast a, you know, most of the games we don't show in full from replays later, so you guys can still see the games. But of course, there's also the fact that uh, we will be giving you guys live updates. We're not hiding any scores from you guys. We're giving you the scores as they come in, and all the rest of it as we see... A Reaper on the way up from both players here, the Factory coming in from Uthermal. This time he's the player who's going to get aggressive early on. As you're going to see that command center dropping down onto the natural expansion. Clem will be expanding, so complete 180 in terms of builds from each player. Or well, complete just swap a route from each player as uh, compared to that last game on battle on the boardwalk. Again, yeah, Uthermal just fell behind so early in the last game from the early pressure of his opponent. It all came down to that first Reaper and... If you know, if you never thought one Reaper could make the difference, and by God, you need to go and look at that uh, <laughs> that last game because losing that first Reaper put Uthermal so far behind to the point where he even forgot upgrade or didn't forget upgrades later, but he lost his upgrades or had his upgrades later. It was delayed, and because it was delayed, he just fell so heavily behind, and obviously that was uh, not really kind of pretty. You know, he did a good job holding on, but eventually just didn't have enough. He had one less factory. He had the slower upgrades. And in a Cyclone versus Cyclone fight, that is so flipping crucial. It uh, really is quite painful here. As we're going to see these two Reapers coming in towards the other left side. And while well, we're going to be seeing this uh, SCV on the mineral line is already being um, chased away just slightly. There's that Hellion from Fan going down this ramp and just going to be starting to push those Reapers away. Grenade will go off and actually will push the Hellion up into the sky. Hellion goes low, doesn't get picked off. Euphemal just loses a Reaper as now his own Hellion. Coming across the map to back up what is already a Cyclone over here. So here we go. Euphermal going to push in. And he's going to start doing some damage. There's one SCV going down already. And this Reaper taking some shots as well. 
And this is Yukon will able to apply some pressure here and get some damage going. Still two Marines, the Hellion and a Reaper set up on this ramp. As we're going to be seeing the Cyclone, Reaper and Hellion will turn around once again. The Cyclone, obviously, from Clem makes this a much better situation. Able to push this back a little bit more easily now. He still has an SCV down to the south side of the map, by the way. Still with an SCV over here at the moment as Climate gathers up just on the high ground. Cloaking Field coming up for that Banshee follow-up now from Ufermo as he looks to continue dealing damage over the next couple of moments. Guys, can... Some things on my mind. Can anyone remember yesterday's stream? At some point yesterday, I had a really... I feel like I had a really great idea for a new emote for the channel. And now that I'm trying to think of what it was... I can't remember. Can someone remember what I was getting really excited about when it came to emotes yesterday? I'm sure I had a really good idea. Now I just kind of think of it for the life of me. So this Banshee comes in. It's going to be picking up a whole bunch of SCVs. Full work is going down before the turret comes up. But there's a scan. And this is going to be one dead Banshee. Two Vikings going to be... Uh, Coming in to uh, help shut that down with the Cyclone. Still Cyclone's poking at the front. <laughs> What's up, base trade and base trade fans? Consider using your Prime sub since Wardy won't use his. I don't have a Prime sub, goddammit. I don't have one to use. Reaper comes in very nearly. Actually uh, stops the CC from building. As you found so far has been... Uh... Ah, math on streamer mode. Fazic, he's nailed it. Banshee does uh, clean this up. Fazit coming in with the math on stream. That's it. That's the one. Yeah, math on stream. I love that mo. That's gonna be great. Great idea. God, someone paid attention to the stream. Amazing. Yeah, what's up? Thank you. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Base Trade, coming on in. As uh... <laughs> Rift King. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna catch up with this in a moment. As we're gonna be seeing the uh, Banshee coming forwards, it is gonna be cloaking up. It's going to pick its way through a couple of these Marines. So a couple of Marines going down here. You're going to see this Hellion getting picked off. As here he goes. Cyclone's going to come through. A tank gets picked off. A Hellion another Cyclone getting picked away at. Ufilm will continue to fight this here. As we are going to be seeing multiple SCVs going down. Cyclone's fallen as well. But Ufilm has got control of the low ground. With control of the low ground. He's going to kill the turret. Which means the next Banshee if there is one. Which there is. Here it is. It's going to come in. And it's going to be able to do a lot. Vikings landing. Picking off one of the Cyclones. But not a second. And Clem trying to go into bio behind this is just not going to get the opportunity to the point where this CC is starting to drop super quickly. And this is really, really bad right now. A scan will kill this Banshee, but these Cyclones could even just, I mean, just sort of fight anything here. I mean, there goes the Viking and the units are just not going to be coming out in time. I mean, another tank pops out, instantly targets down one Cyclone, but look at the damage output. Picks off this siege tank here, picks off these Marines. And as those Marines drop down, I mean, there goes Stim and there goes everything else happening in this game, basically. And we're going to be seeing new thermal is just going to maybe win the game right here with these three cyclones. Uh, Depot gets loads. The SCVs can come in for the surround, but, well, I mean, he kills one of these uh, cyclones, but that's about it. I mean, okay, maybe he gets the other ones here eventually, but there's so much damage done. Clem, maybe he's just going to fight it out until he loses everything. GG, well played. New thermal picks up game three, and he's going to take this one two games to one. New thermal.